Coming up on Backyard Science, opening up the lines of communication with a homemade fax machine. Blowing up balloons with a ball bearing and a bike pump. And how water can help you see things in a very different light. Revealing the case of the secret letters. Hammering home a handy balancing act. And harnessing some rev head power from magnets. But first up, cunning crimes being committed down in Ben's neighbourhood. So they've called in a special agent with superpowers of deduction. Ooh, I'm on the edge of my seat. So let's not waste another minute. The name's Newham. Ben Newham. And solving crime is my game. There's been a backyard kidnapping. I'm here to unravel the case of Pugsy, the missing guinea pig. Okay, calm down now. Where was Pugsy last seen? Hmm, taken from his hutch in broad daylight. We're dealing with hardcore criminals here. And my prime suspects, yes, the very people who reported this crime. Hello, what's this? Looks like someone might be planting clues for me. Hmm, feels a bit waxy. Aha! I do believe it's the old invisible candle trick. A quick one circle with this crayon, and we're in business. Intriguing. According to my informant, our thief is a boy. I'll get to the bottom of this guinea pig caper if it's the last thing I do. Ty can't get enough of blowing bubbles, but she's run out of bubble mixture. I'd better go to the rescue. Hey Ty, you're missing something. You need more than just water. Here, this detergent will do the trick. There, now blow away. You can't make bubbles with just water because water molecules like to stick together. So it won't make a film over the frame. Detergent, on the other hand, is stretchy enough to create the film needed for bubble blowing. There, bubbles, no troubles. But I know how to really blow up this scene. Want to see how? Right. Monster bubbles, here we come. Pour some glycerine into the detergent. This will help strengthen the bubbles. Now take a tire that's been cut through the middle. This will be our big bubble dish. Pour in the bubble mixture. Take a hula hoop and place it in the detergent. Now this could quite possibly be the biggest bubble wand in the world. Wow. Shame it has to burn. A bubble is made up of a thin layer of water sandwiched between two layers of detergent. It can't last forever because the water eventually evaporates, causing the bubble to burst. Your turn. I bet you're busting to have a go, Ty. Now stand very still. Bravo for Ty the Human Bubble Girl. What you're thinking. You wish we had an engine to pick up the pace a bit. Well, that's easy. I can do that. All we need is a couple of these guys. Magnets. Tape one magnet to the top of the car and watch this. How's that for action? That's live in this speed layer. Okay, now let's reverse the drive. Brilliant! This is so cool. All magnets have a north and a south pole. The opposite poles form an attraction pulling the car forwards. When the same poles are pointed together, they repel each other, pushing the car away. Whoop! Our car's probably ready for the scrap heap now. <laughs> magnets and metals often form a powerful partnership. Giant magnets are used to pick up and move cars that have been squashed into mountains of scrap metal. <laughs> Yeah. 
Blake should join a circus. He's really good at balancing act. I'm not though. This hammer is too top heavy. Here, if you're so good, then see if you can balance this on the end of a ruler. No, nope, no way. I know how to make the ruler support the hammer. All you need to do is cut a piece of string and tie it into a loop. Simple. Now thread the handle into the loop. And now to hang my magic hammer. Unreal! Look at that! Excellent balance! Normally, the weight of the hammer would pull the ruler down. But the string and the hammer act like a lever, pushing the ruler up instead of pulling it down. Hey, 10 out of 10 for using your hammer, head. They really nailed that balancing act. <laughs> Very funny. Now let's get back to the scene of the crime as Ben works around the clock to solve a mysterious case. Okay, folks, as you know, I've been called in to solve the case of Pugsy the guinea pig napped pet. I must tell you that you are all prime suspects. Now, there's been a development in the case. There's an informant amongst you. I thank whoever that is, and I ask him or her to come forward with any more information. Now, I must get back to work. Aha, another clue. Hmm, interesting. A blank piece of paper. Reminds me of a case back in the summer of 98, but that's another story. Back to the guinea pig. I need to tighten my thinking cap and get one step ahead of this heartless thief. Hey Genevieve, watch this, and prepare to be amazed with my magic and mastery. Watch me pull a rabbit out of his hat. Alright, it needs some work. Now for my next act. My amazing juggling skills will astound you. <laughs> Genevieve's a tough audience. But this will impress you. Follow me. What if I said I could turn this one apple into six apples? I need two mirrors. Stand the mirrors opposite each other, put the apple between them, and prepare for the showstopper. Now move the mirrors a little until the apples grow. Yes, a showman always saves the best for last. Enough for an apple pie. When two mirrors are faced opposite each other, light is trapped between them. This light bounces in the middle of the mirrors, causing the original reflection of the apple to multiply. Sorry I can't share, those other apples weren't real. I tell you, my juggling skills don't reflect well on me. <laughs> Bad jokes and you're a hard act to watch, Jason. Please don't give up your day job. <laughs> now time for a tale of power, magnetism and deep attraction. Magnet walls are the coolest. You can have all sorts of fun with magnets. Here, I'll show you something else. We need to make lots of tiny bits of metal. This extra fine steel wool should do the trick. You pour some oil into a jar of water. This will help the metal float. Okay, pour in the metal. Give it a good stir. The magnet is pulling the metal into one big bunch. And now we can move it all around. Some metals like to stick to magnets, but magnetic attraction doesn't always work in one direction. It forms a pattern around the magnet. We call this the magnetic field. I could play with these things all day. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, what's that on my book? No, it's not rain. It's definitely wet, though. I'm baffled. Well, if it's not rain, it must have come from my mouth. It must have something to do with sucking on a lollipop. It did! I did do it! I've got this fun water squirter in my mouth. But how does it work? The squirting of saliva from our mouth is called gleeking. Two things need to occur for this to happen. Firstly, you need to stimulate the saliva glands by sucking something. And secondly, you need to curl your tongue and press down on it. The saliva glands under the tongue squirt when the muscles around them are compressed. Gleeking usually happens accidentally, but you can learn to do it on purpose. But it takes some practice. If only gleeking was an Olympic sport, I'd be a gold medal winner for sure. Oh, that's gross. But I reckon the gleeking games would draw a huge crowd. And before you even think about trying it, I'm going to cross straight to Ben for his stunning conclusion to the case of Pugsy the Missing Guinea Pig. As you may have read, Pugsy the Guinea Pig has been snatched from his hutch. This paper could hold a clue. Hmm, the old baking soda man. Very cunning. Just watch what happens when I paint the paper with a bit of grape juice. To make invisible ink, you need to mix equal parts of baking soda and water. A chemical reaction occurs when the acid in the juice meets the baking soda. This reaction forms a colour and in turn reveals the once invisible writing. Now what is my informant telling me? It's a map showing the house where the culprit lives. I think it's time I visited those suspects again. Thank you once again for joining me. The case has been solved. My informant has tried to lead me up the garden path with clues that don't add up. The first secret message said the subject was a boy. The second secret message showed where he lived. But a girl lives in that house. What's more, after closer investigation, that's just an old shed, not a guinea pig hutch at all. <laughs> Looks like I've been had big time. Pugsy never existed. <laughs> Base to Blake. Base to Blake. Come in, Blake. What's wrong with this thing? Can you hear me? No, nothing. Looks like the fun's over. We need to work out another way to send messages to each other. Wait there, I'm going back to HQ, where I think I can hatch a clever plan. I'm gonna need help for this. Right, we're going to make our own high-tech means of communication. We've got everything here from a bulb to a buzzer. Scissors to screwdriver. Okay, time to get our fax straight. Get it? We're making a fax machine. and she's remembered my birthday. Thanks. These flowers didn't last long. What a shame. Hold your nose, the water really smells. There's got to be a way to make my birthday flowers last longer. Let's try to find it. We've got water, five vases, scissors, tape, vinegar, sugar, bleach and my birthday flowers. Pour the same amount of water into the vases. If I cut the stems at an angle, it'll help the flowers draw up more water. And removing excess leaves will keep the water cleaner. Now to find the magic ingredient that will make my flowers last longer. First, we'll add a teaspoon of sugar to one vase. This one gets some vinegar. An aspirin tablet to the third vase. A dash of bleach into the next vase. And the last one will be just plain water. Okay, let's see how they're looking. Water, okay. Bleach, great. Aspirin, ugh, wilting. Vinegar, dying. 
and the one in the sugar is still fresh. Sugar is food for the flour, so when it's added to the water, the flour lives longer. But flowers also need clean water. Bleach kills the bacteria that harm the flour and cause that gross smell. While the aspirin and vinegar didn't give the flowers any food, so they died sooner. And what's good for our flowers? Has to be good for us. I've got something small that I need to have a better look at. And Tyler reckons he's got just the thing to help out. All we need is a jar with our little specimen in it. Lots of plastic wrap placed over the top of the jar to form a well. And last but not least, some water. Time for a closer look. Unreal! It makes my little friend look really big. Water works like a natural magnifying glass. It magnifies because water bends the light shining through it, making the object underneath look bigger. Cool. Now all we need is a real frog to hop. I mean, pop under our magnifying glass. Sometimes the simplest things are the most fun. True, but now it's time for a change of pace as we sit back and receive some high-tech wizardry. Blake and I are working overtime on our fax machine. We need two lots of everything, so we can make one fax to send and one to receive. I've marked up eight strips of card, the same length and width. Blake can cut them out while I go to work on our scanners. The main feature of these is a square with a smaller square in the center. There! Now we need arms for our scanners, the same size as our yellow strips. While Blake's hard at it with the ruler, I'm ready to put the scanners together. Glue the four arms so they match up perfectly with the small square in the middle. Alright, Blake's almost finished numbering the boxes on the strips. So now we're ready to put it all together. Okay, now pin down four numbered strips onto a board. This is our fax to send. And we'll do the same again to make our fax to receive. Our scanners are going to move across the paper like this. But before that, we need to power up these babies. To do that, we need a battery connected to a buzzer and a bulb. Fix them to a board. This will be the control panel at the receiving end of our fax machine. At the transmitting or sending end, we need two switches. One wired back to the buzzer, and one wired back to the bulb. These will also be powered by the same battery. Right. We're all connected. Now for a quick switch test. Yep, the bulb's working. And so is the buzzer. Awesome, we have the technology. going to be happy because I need my stopwatch back. So time's up for their game of 10 second speed check. Wait a sec, I think I know exactly how to solve this little problem. Okay, this won't take much time at all. I'm going to make them their own stopwatch. All they have to do is tape a ruler to the table, fill a lid with clay so that it becomes really heavy. Next, thread some string around a tack at the end of the ruler and fix the other end to the lid with some more clay. There, I've made a pendulum. I want every swing back and forth to take one second. Sonam will be timekeeper. One, two, three. Nah, too slow. It should have swung six times. I'll just pull the lid up. That'll make the pendulum swing faster. Let's see now. One, two, three, four. Brilliant! Each swing back and forth timed out to one second. Pendulums have been used to keep clocks on time for hundreds of years. A pendulum swings at a constant rate. 
This means that once the swing has been set to take one second, every swing after that will also time out to one second. Right, I've tied the pendulum off, so now it's back to the game. All they have to do is count ten swings a turn. Good luck! One, two, three, four... No, that's checkmate! It's Ben's party and we have to blow up all these balloons. We'll never finish in time. There's got to be another way. This can blow up bike tires, maybe. It's no good. The air is just rushing out as fast as it goes in. What we need is something to stop the air from escaping. Take two pieces of plastic tube, one thick and one thin. Smear the end of a thin piece with some gel and fit it snugly into a thicker tube. Tape up the join. Now drop in a ball bearing. Then take another thin piece with a diagonal cut at one end. Push that end into the thick tube and tape it up. There you go, I've made my valve. Now tape a balloon to the end with the diagonal cut and the bike pump to the other end. Now let's start pumping. Yes, the ball bearing stops the air from escaping. That's because the valve controls the flow of air. When air is pumped into the valve, the ball bearing is pushed up against the diagonal cut. But it only sits at the bottom of the cut, allowing air to flow over the top and into the balloon. When air from the balloon tries to escape, it pushes the ball bearing down onto the square cut, closing the valve completely. This traps the air and stops the balloon from deflating. Okay, now we can relax. Okay, our homemade fax machine is ready to go. We can begin our mission for transmission. Now we both start at the same spot. When the buzzer sounds, that's Blake's cue to move to the next square. This way we can keep the same pace as I scan the paper. When I hit part of the image I'm sending, I'll switch on the bulb. All Blake has to do is color on the square using his scanner. Before long, the picture will be revealed. Okay, now that's clear, let's give it a go. I'm going to send this smiley face, which should be happily received at the other end by Blake. Our scanners are set in the start position. So I'll flick at the buzzer switch, and the transmission is underway. I've got lots of blank squares to get through. So there's a lot of buzzing and fast scanning going on. I hope Blake's keeping up. Finally, my scanner's showing some black. It's time for the light bulb and a spot of coloring in. The word fax is short for facsimile, which means an exact copy. This handmade fax machine works pretty much like the real thing, relying on a scanner to detect the amount of black ink in each roll of tiny squares. While Tyler and Blake's fax can only scan and receive one square at a time, it's amazing how even the most complicated concept can have a simple explanation. Okay, our transmission has ended. Now we can face the fax. Yes, a perfect printout. Blake really makes a very good copy cat. And to think we used to communicate with carrier pigeons. Life has really sped up thanks to technology. And speaking of speed, time really does fly when you're having fun. We've got to say goodbye for now. Hope you enjoyed the ride. See, See you, you next time. time. Oh.